do I even begin to explain my feelings on this book? Hi guys, it's April and I'm gonna do this review the same way I do all of my other reviews. I'm gonna have the non spoiler section up front followed by the spoiled filled dump afterwards in case you don't wanna spoil yourself, but by no means does that mean go away? You do you, I will not judge you in any way. I also want it noted that I received an art copy of the left-handed booksellers of London by Garth Nix for a free and honest review, but that in no way has influenced my opinion on this book, as you are about to see, but I just thought you should know. So the left-handed booksellers of London, which is a really ridiculously long title, is the story of Susan, who is a young girl who goes to London in search of her father. The year is 1983, but this is an alternate London to the one we know. There are these group of people called booksellers. They are divided up into two different classes, left-handed and right-handed, according to their abilities and where their power comes from. So here we have a London that is full of different kinds of magic. We have the old world still influencing things going on. And then we have this young girl, Susan, who's a thrust into the middle of this world that she doesn't completely understand, but might be a part of in a way she never knew. I do have to say, I absolutely adored the premise of this book. We have these magic wielders who use book selling as a way to ground themselves. I believe even at one point in the book, they talk about how books anchor the soul. So I really love how books played a huge role in this story, but it wasn't as big as I wanted it to be. We didn't actually get to see a lot of the actual foundations of the booksellers. We got a lot of information dumped on us very rapidly in various different sections of the book, which made it feel a little bit too much info dumpy, but in the same way, a lot of this information had to be dumped in order for you to actually understand what is going on. This book has a wild whimsy feel to it that if some of this information wasn't given, it could be very easy to get lost in all of the different twists and turns this book decides to throw at you. And it does have a very, very dry sense of humor, which if you do not enjoy that, you probably will not enjoy this book. It has a little bit of a feel of a mix between Alice in Wonderland and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And I think it's that British humor that is playing up to that hitchhiker side of it. And then it's got this whimsical old world pulling into all of these magical creatures and all of these magical systems in a way that is very in your face and doesn't let you, this book just doesn't let you catch your breath at any point. It's just, it's constantly moving and there's constantly these really bizarre things happening. And then Merlin, who's one of the characters and Vivian, his sister, who are both booksellers, are constantly telling Susan what is going on and why these things are going on. I did enjoy where this book went and all the things that it covered and Susan's drive to find her father and what all that means. However, I struggled to actually enjoy how the characters were written and how things progressed. There were a lot of times where I just, it was too much too quickly and it never really gave you time to feel the buildup of Susan and finding her father and learning all of this information. It kind of just slaps you in the face with all of it. And I almost wanted to go on the journey with Susan, but I wasn't given the chance. I was just given, hey, all of this happened. It's a thing. So do I just like this book? No, I, I liked it for what it was. I just wanted to be involved more in the story than I actually got to participate. It was a very quick read, though I, at the beginning you can kind of struggle to get through it because you do have all of this new stuff thrown at you and you have to try to catch up to where this world exists. But overall, it was an okay read. So this is the point in my review in which I'm going to switch over to some spoiled filled thoughts. If you would like to read this book, I suggest you leave now and come back and we'll start a conversation. 
However, let me know down below if you're going to do that. If you want to read this book or if you don't want to read this book, I would love to know. So tell me down below. But otherwise, uh, this, is, this is where things kind of uh, take a turn. One of my biggest issues with this book was just, as I stated earlier, was how it gave information and then expected you to be able to follow the information. So there was a lot of times where Susan is interacting with Merlin and something really bizarre happens. Like she gets pulled into the other world, the old world, the other realm. I can't remember what they call it off the top of my head right now. And all of these like things happen that if you know the mythology of the area, it makes sense, but it feels very bizarre the way all of it happens. And it leads you to not really connecting with any particular character. You have this romance sort of kind of that builds between Susan and Merlin. That is the whole back cover is talking about Susan, it's talking about Merlin. And then I expected there to be more of Merlin's perspective just because of the way the synopsis is given, but it's mostly Susan with sprinklings of Merlin that in the end end up with them going on a coffee date. And I don't think I ever really felt that connection because Merlin's this really weird and bizarre character. And I think if we had gotten some stuff from his perspective, and we kind of started to understand all of Merlin's motivations and why he kind of comes off the way he comes off, maybe I would have understood Susan and Merlin's connection a little bit more, but I just, the way and the pace and all of the things that happen in this book, you, you really don't get a feel for any particular character. It's more about the things that go on this book than it is about the characters. And for some people, that's perfectly fine. For me, it wasn't the most enjoyable, but I did like seeing everything that Nyx decided to do with this London in this old world mythology. It was, it was fun. I can't, I have to remember if I've actually read anything by him before, but if his writing is like this, I, I don't know if I will enjoy a lot of his other works because just because of how he builds things up, I just, it, it wasn't that enjoyable for me. I don't know, those are my feelings. Tell me down below what your thoughts are on this book. I would love to hear from you. And of course, if you wanna see more content like this, subscribe down below, hit that bell, get that notification, and I hurt your beautiful faces. Bye.